Before I took this job, I'd had all the shit I could take and a little more. I cracked. I had what they call a psychotic episode. The world I was involved in was too messed up for me to deal with. My meltdown was entirely job related, the job I had before this one. When I had my breakdown, I lost that job and just about everything else. In its place, I took a job mucking horse stalls. It was therapeutic and had metaphoric meaning for me. Every day the stall fills up with shit, and every day I clean it out and cover it with fresh, clean shavings. It's a quiet and peaceful job, and it gave me time to think. As I sifted the shit in the stall, I sifted the shit in my head. And my job at the Portland Hotel put a lot of shit in my head. I started doing this job because I needed time to think and time to heal. I needed to get grounded, and horses do that for me. They're giant, peaceful creatures, and I took a certain internal reward caring for them. In a lot of ways, this job was like my last job, caring for others who couldn't care for themselves. But these animals are at peace, and they put me at peace. They've had much more care and attention lavished upon them than the residents at my previous job. The irony has never lost on me. For about a year, I made a living working downtown on the east side of Vancouver at a last chance housing facility called the Portland Hotel. Most of the residents were drug addicts. Many had AIDS and the women were mostly prostitutes. The men were pimps, dealers, and petty thieves. They all had tragic stories and they shared them with me. I came to respect them for just getting on with life and I soon realized I would not have fared any better if I'd been dealt their lives. Unlike these horses who are pampered and cared for, the residents at the Portland have nearly all been abused and abandoned. Many of them were mental health patients, like Angela, that the medical system abandoned and left to fend for themselves with no skills or support. They ended up on the streets where they were easy targets for pimps and drug dealers. Street life further deteriorated their mental health. Angela scrambled just to stay alive. She didn't have the mental faculty to really care for herself, let alone get a job. She was just smart enough to learn that men would pay her to do things with her clothes off. She was forced to choose this means just to stay alive. So was Michelle. Michelle was a sweet, tiny native girl who somehow always had a smile on her face. She was always trying to do nice things for people. She sat in my office and told me in bits and pieces what had happened to her. She would go out and get me coffee and then sit down with me in my protective cage. I suppose she felt safe in the office, inside the cage. I don't think she felt safe anywhere else. Michelle, like so many others, was raped and beaten while she was at a government-sponsored school for Native Canadians. She was never given any counseling or support when she finally left. She didn't hang around long enough to graduate. Like Angela, she too was simply left to fend for herself in a world that had already abused her and taught her that her life had no inherent value. She too fell easily to drugs and prostitution. In my time at the Portland Hotel, I never met one resident who hadn't overcome amazing odds and simply still being alive. It was obvious to me that the problem was not with the people living on the east side, but in the system failures that put them there. Many of these horses are worth more money than the residents of the Portland will ever see, and their monthly care bills far exceed what is spent on the lives of the people at the Portland. The wealthy have thousands of dollars to spend on their pets that they would balk at spending on an abused human. My experience just trying to make a living has made this painful irony a part of me. I enter into a shit-filled stall and set about cleaning it. I take out the shit from one stall after another, day after day, and I pretend the world is a cleaner place. But I'm not deceiving myself. I'm merely dealing with the shit and trying to get closer to the problem. I'm trying to understand how some can have so much while others are being beaten to death. I've shoveled a lot of shit, but I've only learned that the wealthy are happily oblivious to what goes on in the economic system they support and are supported by. They can't afford to care for the downtrodden humans. Their horses need new saddles and new shoes. They pay me two dollars to clean the stall and another dollar to feed them and turn them out. They can't afford to pay me more. There are so many downtrodden lackeys who can do this job. There are junkies downtown they could hire for $10 fix if they could just trust that type of person. But they would never trust those people. Those people are untrustworthy. They have to have a certain amount of wealth to be trustworthy. There's a sad truth in that. Go figure. The rich don't trust the poor who couldn't trust the system to keep them safe. 
I, on the other hand, am perfect for this job. Just poor and beaten enough to work for minimum wage, but not so poor and desperate to steal their possessions. On a couple of occasions, I've tried to broach the subject of the homeless living in Vancouver with the people here. It's never gone well. It's not something that's open for discussion. In the eyes of the horse owners, those people have apparently made the lives they are living. These people, the horse owners, have worked hard for their wealth. They deserve what they have. I wonder if this implies that Michelle deserved to be raped when she was 12 years old by the priest at her school, or if Angela deserved to be put on the street when her mental institute she was lived in was denied funding. And what did these horses do to deserve a better life than has been afforded Michelle or Angela? They were born out of a certain mare by a certain stallion, each of which had specific skills and traits, ensuring the value and protection of their offspring. Michelle and Angela were not so lucky. They've suffered the consequences. I'm somewhere in between and have been afforded the painful luxury of being able to pass in and out of each world, the mean streets of Vancouver's east side and the pleasant hallways of an upper-class horse farm. I've seen the rich live their lives and I've seen the poor endure theirs. I've so far been unable to reconcile the two worlds, but it's more than this that put me here. The subtle underlying irony of the situation is enough to drive a person crazy, but the abuse is more overt and more brutal than just this. I've been privy to this as well, and it's this that ultimately put me here. I tried to help out as best I could, but I was not strong enough. I could not withstand the force of the violence I encountered downtown. I cracked and I broke. I could not save Michelle or Angela. In the end, I was barely strong enough to save myself.